Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be going over the dynamic of CT mid and how your cat player, window player, and connector player are all going to be playing mid together. Now they should react to different smokes, different standard smokes at least. Um, this will probably be my last Mirage video for a little bit. I'm going to focus on train after this. Um, obviously I don't have to solely focus on a map. If anybody has any other suggestions or requests, I can do that. If you want to learn how to do banana c control inferno or something simple like that, we can easily go over that. But this is going to be a more advanced, um, top mid control, mid control, bottom mid control, uh, for CT side video. So your standard T side, you're either going to have a smoke top mid and then from that, once you're able to cross freely, you're going to be smoking window. Let's see if that actually lands. It does. Okay. So with this, you now have mid control. You're able to cross. You now have window control. So now all you have to do is worry about cat and worry about connector. Now there is a different way to streamline this. Instead of wasting two smokes, you can just use one. And we're going to do a window smoke from T. Okay. So, and now you've only wasted one smoke, or used one smoke, instead of two. And you can use another one for connector, or another one cat. But the, this is the like two main ways that people are going to take mid-control, or at least try to take mid-control. Um, both end up with the nest player unable to peek out. Okay. Um, the good thing about the first one where they use two smokes is that once that smoke gets down, you can still watch to see if it's going to be a straight cat rush. Obviously you won't be able to see this gap, there won't be that, um, but you can still like hold this angle and watch for a cat push up. Um, you can still like peek underpass, like jump peek it, um, or you could get super aggressive, which I do not suggest. Um, unless you know that they've been smoking this off and not mauling or not nading, you can get on this side and wait for somebody to peek out boxes on the right. But once this uh, mid smoke gets thrown, this window smoke that is, you have three options. You can either wait the smoke out, you could hold palace and tell your connector player only worry about connector, I have your palace. Or you could tell your connector player only worry about palace, I have connector. Now I would suggest this angle. Um, or something like this angle, depending on how far they up, they're up mid. You could even peek here and uh, catch one lurking. Well, not lurking, but being stupid. Um, but so, let's say you pick the third option where you, uh, the nest player, are holding mid. You have called that um, nest is smoked out, so that means that your cat player now has reacted. Do I have a... No, I don't have an M4 over here. Pretend I have an M4. Um, your cat player now knows that you cannot be peeking mid, and they could be anywhere mid, basically. They could be bottom mid, um, they could be running down cat. You're going to use footsteps to your advantage. But first thing you want to do is peek to, uh, to chair, and if nobody's there, or you get a pick there, you can push up and get a little bit more control. You don't want to give them mid immediately, especially if it's a gun round versus gun round and you have full utility. There's no reason to give them mid immediately you can at least put up a fight. Now, I wouldn't suggest peeking out any further than here unless you have somebody pushing out through connector to bottom connector or you have a nest player that's like, hey, top mid's clear, okay? So I would wait about here. Um, you can hear footsteps coming up and you will probably be able to see their guns because if I'm here, I'm watching connector as I'm crossing and because I'm crouched watching, my gun is sticking all the way out and you can easily see that here. You'll see a barrel sticking out and then you can peek them, catch them off guard. Um, because they're not going to worry about cat until they cross this threshold. Up until then, they're going to be worried about connector. Okay? So, cat player, pretty simple. Um, you're just playing for your teammates, and you're not making the plays yourself. Again, none of these positions should really be making the plays themselves. They shouldn't be solo, like, wide swinging on something. There's no reason to do that. Um, you want the T's to walk into your crosshair um, and maintain the control. So while your cat's player, cat player is doing that, let's see. Let's say your nest player is now holding this. Your nest player can make the call out, hey, they're walking up cat. Your cat player can react off that because he can see the walk up. Um, you can also watch bottom mid where uh, if nobody's walking up cat. Or let's say 
there's somebody here, Cat. You don't really see them. Um, you have no information that they're there, but they're walking up connector, and you miss your shot, and now they've crossed to left side connector, and you can no longer see them. You don't want to wide swing out. That's exactly what they want you to do. You don't want to do that. Um, you can have your player that stares set up a crossfire, um, but if they're just standing bottom connector, your cat player, instead of holding an aggressive angle like this, can now fall back a little bit and just wait for them to walk up connector. Um, and that allows you just to have a nice crossfire, a three-way crossfire that is, um, and stop a push. Now, let's say that your op player uh, didn't elect to look at connector and he's now looking at palace while your M4 player is looking connector and he doesn't have to worry about palace. So, as an M4 player, you would either want to stay up on here. Um, this would be a good angle. They're not going to come out of connector with you here. And if they do, you will at least get one um, because they're not going to pre-aim stairs or like mid stairs. They're either going to be looking top stairs. Um, while they're swinging down, they may get you, but obviously when they're here, you can see their feet before they can see yours, um, and they're not going to be like pre-aiming right there. So this is a nice angle. I would not suggest this angle just because first you can wall bang through it. Maybe let's see. Yeah, you can wall bang through it. Um, if I'm standing here, that's a headshot, and it's such like an easy like preamble angle. I can see your feet here. You can't see me because like look, you cannot see me at all, but I would be able to see your feet here. Um, and it's just an easy pre-aim headshot, you're done. So this angle, shitty. Um, play like somewhere on the stairs, really nice. You can even play up here in box. I would, this is the, it's risky. Uh, depends on what buy they're on. If they're on a gun round, I would not suggest this because if they have any sort of utility, you can get mollied off and then you have to wide swing out to get back to a safe spot. Um, here, I would play this angle if I know that they're still top mid and we still have like the cat player got aggressive or something and he's like, hey, they're still behind boxes. Um, I would wait here um, and either watch somebody crossing over or watch for them crossing back. It depends on the situation. Or you can play here and watch the underpass. Um, this is fairly powerful because the underpass player may be looking here. There's different angles that they have to be looking at. And so as long as you play it smart, um, you should be able to at least get one kill and dent their push. Now let's go over grenades you can use, okay? You can smoke that off, it smokes bottom, and this allows you a bit of a one way. Um, and if the T's elect to smoke connector, which they would do from here, that allows you to see the cat cross and watch top mid without too much of an issue. Um, they're not, it's really hard for them to see you in the smoke, so you can see, uh, they might be able to see a head sticking through, but you'll be able to see their full body, they'll just be able to see your head, and you'll most likely be able to get the kill. So work around their smokes, um, another cat smoke that could be thrown, well, another smoke would be a cat smoke, that would be thrown from about here, and as a cat player, um, if this smoke is thrown, there's not too much you could do about it, you could have a teammate boost you up here. Um, which is fairly powerful, but they may be looking for this. Uh, the cat player will be able to see you fairly well. Uh, not cat, the chair player will be able to see you fairly well, but you can see a cat run up. You can also, with the smoke down, it's about there, um, you can also take a more aggressive angle, yet still passive in a way, in ladder. Um, you can play on top of the ladder. And all your bullets are accurate. If you're on the ladder, your bullets are not accurate. If you're on top, they are. Um, you can play up in this corner. Uh, you can play back here. Another thing that you can do is have your nest player break the vent for you so they don't know that you're the one who's breaking it. Um, obviously, it's still like, hey, there's probably somebody in vent for them to break it. Or you could have your nest player break it at the start of the round just to give you this option. And you can easily see somebody go under window here. Um, you can even get a little bit more aggressive and watch a connector push. Um, and it's fairly easy just to fall onto this stack of uh, fucking whatever they're called, center blocks. Um, but it's really just playing off each other, making callouts, making sure what is known, 
well, like where their positions are. Um, if you have information, you share it. If you don't have information, you don't share it. I don't. The worst is, hey, they could be up cat, and you're like, okay, and you swing out cat, and there's literally nothing there, and there's a guy sitting there, and you die. Okay. You don't want any, hey, they could be's. You want lots of, hey, I'm not sure, or they're actually cat. I see one. Um, and you're gonna use your radar to your advantage here. It will help a lot. But yes, just make callouts to your teammates. Don't try to make a hero play by solo peeking. Um, but always be aware of mid. There's The problem is, in a lot of matches, it isn't that somebody's like wide swinging by, by themselves. It does happen sometimes. But what happens more often is that the nest player gets smoked out, doesn't say anything. The connector player is still wa like watching top stairs. Um, or like barely watching underpass, some, some shitty angle like this or something. And the cat player isn't playing cat. He's playing like under window. Okay, they now have mid control completely. All right, they don't know this, but as long as they keep on pushing up and they're like, hey, nobody's taking a shot, nobody's taking a shot. All of a sudden, there's two people out underpass. There's one in connector, and the guy, the CT goes down, and he's like, what the fuck? I thought somebody was watching mid. Like, it's as simple as that. I hear what the fuck. I thought somebody was watching mid at least three times a game when playing at like a lower skill level because players just don't understand that as a cat player or as a connector player, your job is also half like watching mid. You have to support your nest player. It's unrealistic to have a nest player hold down the entirety of mid.